There is a DJ setting the party mood at full volume. The servers are relaxed and informal. And the menu is 30 courses of meat. Shut up and take my money. Join me and find out as we head to Wes to check out Initial. It's morning in London. We pack the car and hit the road for a good five hour drive, which gives me time to learn about where we are going. The restaurant is inside Snowdonia National Park. It's the largest national park in Wales and home to over 25,000 people. But a lot more come to visit each year. More than 4 million people come here to explore its towering peaks and breathtaking valleys. It's a place deep in culture, history and heritage and where Welsh language can be heard every day. I love tradition and it sounds like this place couldn't get more traditional. The restaurant is called Inishir. It was recommended to me, but I don't know much about it. From the website, they tell us what to expect straight away. A DJ playing music and the theater of the kitchen taking center stage. Expect fire, intense world flavors and the best meat and fish from around the globe. They tell us it's not the best place for a business meeting or an intimate first date, but perfect for that exciting second one. They don't cater for diet restrictions and no substitutions. We must arrive for dinner at 5 p.m and allow four to five hours for the dining experience. Sounds confident. Who is the chef behind this? His name is Garrett Ward. He was born and raised in Durham, England, and started his journey into cooking at 16. His CV includes Michelin star restaurants like Hambleton Hall and restaurant Seth Baines before taking over here in 2013. After just one year, he got his own Michelin star. But in 2016, he created a totally new concept. A restaurant that would be ingredient-led, flavor-driven, fat-fueled and protein-obsessed. With the dream to be a food destination that brings in visitors from around the world. In 2022, Inishir became the first restaurant in Wales awarded two Michelin stars. And in 2023 was named Britain's best restaurant at the National Restaurant Awards. Arriving at the gate, there is a bit of confusion. Our taxi driver seems to think the restaurant is this way. Lucky for us, we don't listen to him. RSBP stands for Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. We find our way to the restaurant. The vibe here definitely says Man Cave. An open fire roaring outside. And inside, lots of dark wood, leather, fur, scars and football. And of course, tunes pumping. We can also see some history. This was first built as a farmhouse in the 15th century. Although it was renovated many times, it still has that older character and feel. Our waiter arrives and gets us excited for the menu, which is split into two parts. First, fish and seafood, starting with Japanese influence, then more full-bodied dishes, and finally with Southeast Asian. Then it's on to meat, going from light to heavy with poultry first and finishing with red meat. It's a total of 30 courses for 550 euros. They don't do wine pairing here, but most of the wine on the wine list can be done by the glass. I see some nice stuff here. Not a lot of heavy hitters, but this is a list I can work with. Next, I check out my room, complete with a little piece of nature. There are seven rooms in the house like this, and they go for 350 euro per night. In the garden, there are a few newly built rooms with more space and privacy. One of those will set you back 800 euro. Our dinner starts here, with a look at what's to come. Our first appetizer is mixed in front of us and served at a nearby table. It's called Not French Onion. It's a take on the classic soup with Japanese inspiration, including nori seaweed and miso broth, but with the added touch of goose liver. Interesting combination and absolutely full of flavor. Then we move. The tunes are really rocking now, and we get the chance to stop by the DJ booth. The resident DJ tells us he puts together a custom set every night, and it's never the same set twice. I wish you could hear The Passenger by Iggy Pop right now. It's totally setting a party mood. We are shown to our table, right in front of the kitchen. It feels like the chef's table. The first bite is sea bream. Japanese inspiration is there and they use fresh wasabi. But they are not faking Japan. For drinks, I start with an old faithful. Cru Grand Cru 171. Sometimes I just don't need surprises. Up next is yellow tea tuna with toasted sesame oil, white soy sauce, wasabi and nori. It's really good with this local brand Abyss Brut Zero from 2017. This is a vintage champagne made from 2017 harvest, bottled in 2018, 
disgorged in 2021 and submerged in the ocean of the coast of Brittany the same year. It was brought up from the depths of the ocean after 11 months. Whether you buy into the idea of submarine wine or not, the champagne is excellent and has the awards to prove it. Next, we have tuna belly with teriyaki sauce. The fish is beautifully buttery and the sauce has a wonderful savory sweet kick. This is a bluefin tuna with rice and black truffle. Lots going on here and the tuna really takes a backseat. This had some spice to it that stayed with me well after they took away the plate. I mean, the rock. Next, another bluefin. This one with olive, jalapeno and yogurt. Just look at all that fat. It melts into an amazing umami flavor on contact. Delicious. It's time to move on to the full-bodied part of the fish courses. The first is Spanish prawn with wild garlic. Really nice smoky flavor with a sweetness to it. The sauce is gorgeous with well integrated flavors. Next is the Orkney scallop. Almost raw, just lightly grilled on one side. The sauce is made from scallop and A5 Wagyu beef fat. It's sweet, creamy, but needs a bit more acid for me. Still, it's a really good one. Atlantic back cod, served in a pork fat miso sauce, topped with N25 caviar. Three boat players, all fighting for attention. Interesting and creative dish. With it, I enjoyed an Austrian Riesling by Nikolaev. This one is the fast Severin and is certified biodynamic. On the way to the washroom, I find myself in a little pocket with comforts from the real world. Football and snacks. Proving you can take the man out of Newcastle, but you can't take the Newcastle out of the man. Next dish is Thai green curry. Made with shrimp, caught in the waters just behind the restaurant. Powerful. Popularize out acidity. I really enjoy this one. Next, lobster tail. It's served raw with a coriander and Thai dipping sauce. The sauce has lots of punch with salty, sweet, spicy and sour happening. So far, there have been some hiccups in the service. Some longer wait times for things here, a wet napkin there. But what they lack in experience, they make up for with enthusiasm and diligence. I'm sure it's hard to find highly trained servers out here at the end of the world. I'm not too worried about these little mistakes. This atmosphere, the music, makes me really feel like I am at a house party. I'm just too busy having a good time. Next is lobster claw in satay sauce. It's served with peanut brittle and fresh lime zest. The lobster is firm but tender and the sauce has bold flavors with sweet undertones. For wine, we try something interesting. This wine is from French producer Duff. This is an aromatic wine that smells a lot like lychee and it's perfectly matched for our last few spicy dishes inspired by Southeast Asia. This is Singapore chili crab served with a steam bun that is deep fried. The crab is good with nice acidity and spice, but this bun nice and soft. As we go from seafood to meat, we first need a palate cleanser. This shaved ice made from pickled ginger juice. It's really nice and it works like a charm. Do you like what you see so far? If you do, please make sure you hit subscribe, so you never miss the boat on a future episode. Our first meat dish is deep fried wheel speed bread with ranch topped with N25 caviar. This was excellent. Big flavors thanks to lots of fat. This is duck liver ice cream. It's served with apple in syrup and fresh form, along with puff spelt and a spelt biscuit. Grated over the top is smoked wheel. It's salty, it's sweet and plays with a ton of textures. With this we try Brandland's Apple Ice 21 Vintage. This is a still ice cider, but it's as sweet as any dessert wine. As you may have noticed by now, the menu has been fat-fueled and protein-obsessed as advertised. As much as I like a nice cut of meat, a few vegetables would be nice to lighten things up. But I'm not going to hold my breath. This is pigeon in a cherryaki sauce with chocolate. Cherryaki is a teriyaki flavored with cherry and garlic. This one was really interesting. I still remember the amazing flavor combination. Very tender, exploding with flavor. I just wish it was pre-sliced so I could focus on it more. What didn't distract me from this dish was wine. I didn't have any. Our next dish is duck made Chinese style. Cooked for 24 hours and then made crispy with hot oil. On the side, a classic garnish, sliced cucumber and sweet onion. And over the top is a traditional Chinese barbecue sauce. For wine, we go with a 2017 California Pinot Noir. Traditional Thai salad with duck and pigeon. 
This is Lampsmere Reef cooked low and slow for 36 hours, then seared and charred over birch wood and brushed with a mint soy glaze, topped with shallots and fresh mint. It tastes as good as it looks. We have to get our hands dirty, but it's totally worth it. Outstanding! Next is sirloin with shiitake mushrooms cooked in beef fat. Over the top is a duck liver custard. Super rich, super flavorful, nicely executed dish. At this point, the DJ has shifted gears. Gone are the likes of Iggy Pop and the Rolling Stones. Now we are into high octane dance music and the speakers are cranked. This next one is a bit strange. First, they put this down in front of us. This is like McDonald's with a Michelin twist. The one by burger is A5 Japanese beef with fixings. The dessert is ice cream with caviar and syrup. I like both of them and the presentation came out of nowhere. Next, we have desserts. This is Yorkshire rhubarb with duck liver custard and topped with spat. The light tart rhubarb and the rich heavy custard make a surprisingly nice couple and move quite well together. Finally, a date cake with vanilla ice cream and traditional miso made with Japanese soybeans. It's not as sweet as it looks, but was really good. The ice cream is excellent quality. Then, just as we are finishing, this happens. I thought something had caught fire for a second. Then I saw this. And now all of the lights are going. Amazing, it totally fits the personality of this place. What a way to finish. When it's time to go, we pick up the bill. As we prepared for our meals and accommodation, this bill is just the drinks, which comes to just over 1200 euro. Yeah. I had an absolute blast here. The DJ and the house party atmosphere really makes this place a joy. My front row seat was the perfect place to watch Chef Ward do his thing. The chef cooks with freedom. However, sometimes I miss the vegetables and freshness and felt the menu was a bit one-sided. That said, they delivered on what was promised. On the service side, I see room for improvement. At times, the weight was a bit too much and my glass stayed empty for too long. But they are enthusiastic. And that's the beauty of it. They are just doing what they love. Chef Ward told me that he wants to have a restaurant where even he would gladly dine. With the fire, the protein, the party, and even a bit of football. It seems like he has done it. When I told him I was going to be honest and mentioned the small mistakes in this video, Chef Ward told me, I'm glad you were here, but I'm not really interested in the video. I'm not sure if I will watch it. Say what you have to say. He was smiling and he added, I don't give a f I love this man and his honesty. Chef, in case you are watching, I hope you like it. On New Year's Eve in Dubai, I had a chance to chat with Chef Björn Frensen. We were talking about what was important in a restaurant, and Björn shared his number one. A restaurant should be fun. Inishir was fun indeed. This is a fun place full of honest people. I, for one, am going to miss them. And that does it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit subscribe. See you next time.